A forgotten artifact lies in pieces on a planet far from Earth. Few know it exists except those who took it back and those whose ancestors created it. Four young people are thrown into a race against emissaries of the gods to find its pieces. Mistrust, greed, and magic are tangled in an endless web. What will the fate be of the universe once it is found and reassembled? Get Scepter of the Gods, The Rod of Truth now on Amazon and get wrapped up in the saga that will not let you go. Good morning and welcome to the Motivational Devotion, where we are merging motivation and spirituality to create a daily dose of confident positivity. I hope that this morning's podcast will help you to be more spiritually and positively motivated so that you can transform your day. This is a special episode in a series of podcasts based on Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. For several years now, I have gone back to the habits taught in this book to prepare for the coming year and home in closer and closer to my lifelong dream and my goals so that I could more effectively achieve my goals. Year after year, we hear people joking about setting New Year's resolutions and then abandoning them by February. Personally, I don't find that very funny. I hope that your resolutions are more important to you than to give them up after only a month or two. What if you were to set one, two, maybe three at the most resolutions or goals for 2024, and then at the end of 2024, find that you nailed each one of them? You can. I set two goals that to me were very large. As I talk about in the motivational devotional, I had to change and grow to become more than I was in order to achieve those goals. As I say this now, I have done that. I changed. I grew. I achieved. Starting with the November 27, 2023 podcast and running through the New Year's Eve podcast, This series offers 35 episodes of principles, inspiration, and motivation that I use toward fulfilling my own lifelong dream. I have audacious goals for 2024, but only three, because more than that will water down your efforts. I will achieve mine by this time next year. You can do the same, and I hope you will pursue yours with relentless intent. If you find these helpful, please go to the Motivational Devotional Facebook page and let me know. For now, let's get on with it. You know, I've never been too much of a hunter. Fisherman, neither. I do enjoy the outdoors, and I have proven myself to be a good shot with a rifle and a patient fisherman who can snag a fish. It's just that I am squeamish. There, it's out. But in the spirit of my podcast a couple days ago, what you see is what you get, and that's just a part of me that is what it is. Even the thought of dressing an animal after it was hunted or cleaning fish brings my toenails into my throat. Ugh. However, if I found myself stranded and alone in the wilderness, I would do what I had to do to survive and eat, and I do know how. I think that selling is one thing that is a lot like hunting. If we don't sell, we don't eat. If you don't like selling, you can maybe find someone else to take care of you, but between the ages of 22 and 65, that may be difficult for most of us. Wait. You may be thinking that since you're a nurse or a teacher or an accountant at a firm or an actor or a musician, that you don't have to sell, and this doesn't apply to you. Well, let me politely but firmly say, think again. When you interviewed for your job, you were selling. You had to sell yourself to whoever was interviewing you. When you have an idea for a work project and you believe in it, and it's a good idea, and you want the boss to believe in it too and let you run with it, you're selling. A musician is selling every time he or she steps up to a microphone. An actor is selling every time he or she takes the stage, and they are especially selling when they audition. A nurse is selling when they approach a patient who tries to be noncompliant and persuades that person to take medication or agree to get a test done. And a doctor is selling for the same reasons. A teacher is selling for the first day of class in a variety of ways, first selling oneself as the one in charge of that room, and then selling the curriculum so the students will buy into it and learn it, and then selling every other thing they teach during the year, as well as extracurricular activities. I think that's maybe enough examples for you to see that regardless of what you do professionally, your career involves selling. But even apart from a career, a parent is a big-time salesperson, and your kids are repeat customers, as long as you don't become the customer and let your kids become the salesperson. That happens a lot, you know. 
You also sell to your friends when you have a place you want to go and you want someone to go with you. It may not be quite to the point for most of us that if we don't sell, we don't eat. If you're in real estate or the car business or something like that, then that may be literal truth. We might not have that daily pressure to bring home the bacon, but eventually, if the company you work for doesn't make money, you don't get paid. Everyone works on commission at some level, and everyone sells something. Having a sales mentality works best if we realize that we aren't pushing something onto someone else. We are solving problems. A successful appliance person doesn't just sell refrigerators. They solve someone's problems that made them shop for a refrigerator. A successful real estate agent is solving someone's living accommodation problems. A successful parent who is good at selling is solving a child's problems that they might have had as an adult. Since we all sell something at some level, that means that we all have to be problem solvers at some level. We each have lists of problems we need solved, also called a to-do list and objectives that we need to accomplish. None of us does this alone because in order to get our things done, we can seek out the people who need their problems solved so that we can accomplish our own goals. Now that is selling. Focusing on the person who needs their problem solved requires guidance. And the way we say it and to whom we say it is just as important as what we say. You may say the same thing to two different people, but you will probably have to change how you say it. Solving that person's problem requires listening with both ears as well as your attention and your heart so that you can really offer the right solution. People will buy what we are selling if we offer it in a way that they realize it helps them solve their problem. In everything you have to do today, can you be creative and find ways to sell so that you are solving other people's problems and along the way accomplishing your own goals? Give it a shot. Get creative because all of creation is already conspiring in your favor. Trust that the universe has your back on this. You ever shop at J.C. Penney's, J.C.P.? The founder, James Cashpenny, once said, Salesmanship is limitless. Our very living is selling. We are all salespeople. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Please help keep this podcast going by following the Motivational Devotional Facebook page, following at Threefold Way Radio on Twitter, and sharing the written format of today's message from motivational-devotional.com on your social media. I am deeply grateful for your support and thank you for letting Motivational Devotional be part of your journey. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Motivational Devotional is a production of Threefold Way Radio, LLC.